Hey, and welcome to Megavision, a show about revenge and justice, but no, not really. Today, uh, we're speaking to author, TV commentator, journalist, all-around troublemaker, Judith Lucier. Hello, um, Christopher. Thanks for coming. I do appreciate it. You wrote uh, one of my favorite books that I bought yesterday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's called Sacré des Panards. You should uh, check it out. It is a book about des Panards. Yeah, There's like 6,000 of them in Quebec. Uh -huh. And uh, I just wanted to read something from your intro that I thought was blew my mind. So, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. I tried to, uh, to, uh, to translate it as best I can. As a spectator of the everyday, there is no better. In the same way that its, its owner notices if you've started back smoking or lost a few pounds, the Dipanar has been witness to the very short history of modern Quebec. Its storefront covered in hand-drawn signs saw the effervescence of the 1970s, the efforts to preserve the French language, waves of immigration. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I just like, at first I was wondering why would you write about Dipanar? And then I, I, I saw that and it's just like, why wouldn't you write about Dipanar? It's funny because uh, a lot of Anglos are really fascinated by this book. And actually yeah. the idea came from an Anglophone. Because I was like, I was working at Ovid Magazine with a lot of Anglophones. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do you say Dipanar in English? And the, 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 the man told me, well, in, in Montreal we just say Dipanar. <laughs> so I, I, I realized that it was really typical of Quebec's culture and that it was specific and because for me it's like Dipanar has always been in my your lexicon in, uh, yes and yeah. the environment and they're not special to me but when you you start uh, digging a little and you see what else that there is in the world in terms of convenience you see that Dipanar are really specific and uh, they say they say a lot about us I, I love it. I love that it's, I mean, there are so many little things that I learned in here. Uh, to honor the fact that you're, you, you were reporting on Dipanar, I went to the local Dipanar and oh, picked yeah. up some veggie samosas, if you'd, if you'd like which, one. <laughs> which talk about the, the immigration yeah. process. The guy at this dep, uh, and I bought some, brought some other things that, oh, yeah. I don't want to advertise for any specific okay. companies, but, uh, you know, uh, that. here's to, uh, to Quebec. Yeah. To an independent and uh, or to to a dis a distinct society, mm -hmm. with our own distinct little subcultures here. Uh, yes. The guy who sold me this, his dad's from India, his mom is from Rwanda, and it's just like it's just a store on the corner of the street, and yet, uh, it has so many little stories within it. What? When you were writing this book, what was something that just totally that you fell in love with? Because it's it's I don't know. It's all I, I'm 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 just still taken aback by how much fun this was. Yes. Well, lots of lots of stuff. Um, I was quit in smoking actually, so my relationship oh, yeah? with my dependent was in the. You were in the outs. It, it was complicated. Uh, but this uh, dependent that's on the cover uh, that was um, hold by. Uh, really passionate woman uh, who lived in the back store. Uh, oh, yeah? Her apartment was literally in the back store. And this Depanar, you know what? It, it doesn't exist anymore. It was transformed into a tire store. Okay. And then it was uh, an apartment back again. It's on the plateau, so pr probably the rent was really high. I would imagine. I, I, I mean, there's a lot about it that I think is very sort of, it's very Quebec, like, like, you talk about the, the holy trinity of sins. Uh -huh. You know, you have the you go to the depth, uh -huh. and it's just vice, the uh -huh. little pleasures in life. Yes, a beer, uh -huh. some cigarettes, a lotto ticket. Um, yeah, and when there's, I look, an, uh, there's an history with all of these. Yeah, because you know when uh, Dipanar started to be able to sell alcohol, uh, it made outrage in the. Of supermarkets, in right? In the supermarkets. They... And uh, when um, uh, Quebec decided that it would sell its own lottery, the perfect yeah. place to sell it was the Dipanar. Yeah. I like the, uh, I like that you use the word Irish sweepstakes. Like, there used to be these uh -huh. old sort of like, you go in the corner, Illegal, you gamble, you roll some it. dice. <laughs> now the government does it through the Dipanar. Um, there, and the, 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 
Perhaps the final thing on Deepanar. We can move on to talk about some other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, in but my neighborhood, oh yeah, I, I could talk or... about it all day. Like like in my neighborhood, it, it's very much. It's a it's it's a neighborhood that's changing. I live in Point mm-hmm. St. Charles, mm-hmm. and you have all of these new condos being built and all uh-huh. of this gentrification. But all of these Deepanaras are still pretty much locally owned. Mm-hmm. There's a guy with a bike who's going to come deliver your yeah. beer to you during the hockey game. Uh, I feel like it's a piece of, it's a piece of the old neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like it's something that, when I'm somewhere else and I'm not in Quebec, I miss it. You know, and it, 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 I feel it in my soul. And I, I just, I guess, wanted to say thank you, and and perhaps just offer you the chance to explain something about the Dipanara that makes it so unique and so special to you. Well, it's probably the local touch uh, yeah. that you just evolved because uh, it's. It, Compared to chain stores, we can have a relationship with the guy, the, the, the yeah. guy, and uh, it's really uh, human and very like there's a proximity, and um, so we, that's why we are really attached to it. it. Because if you go to a chain store, I don't want to talk uh, like bad things about Kushtar or stuff yeah. like that, but the fact is, most of the time. Uh, the employees there are students, so yeah, they are, they, they're there for a year or two. And yes, then. exactly, and then they forget about you, and they yeah. they go into their lives, and it's finished. Um, but the 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 deaf guy who's there, like like a pillar for many years, like maybe he's Asian, and, and yeah. you have to talk about with him about like its origins. Or, yeah, uh, what it's like culture, coming to your country, yeah, exactly, and uh, and. You, He, he talked with these people, and you're really close to them, so he, that's why we are so attached. And also because that's the cool place to go for every vices. That's right, <laughs> all of your sins. You associate with it. Yeah. I, I remember uh, uh, on my street corner in Saint when I was living there, you know, they see you when you're hungover. Yes. They see you when you need something uh, like... 11 or, or midnight or and whatever. They don't ju- judge. They don't judge you, you know? Like <laughs> Because you buy them. They don't they do and they don't. Like yeah. they know that you're supposed to be in class and and, uh-huh. and one of them's kind of give like I remember she would give me a look like, "Come on, man. Uh-huh. You're messing this up." You're not eating you're, yet. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I want to smoke cigarettes still. Yeah, yeah, I'll, you know, <laughs> one hand washes the other. Yeah. But um uh, perhaps uh, changing gears a little bit, you are Oh, man, I'm screwed. I, I think it's my turn. Oh, it is your turn. I've just moved the perfect yeah. one. You have a, a TV show with uh, your friend, um, and, and co- I, I don't even remember her name right now. I'm so nervous. Lili. Lili. Uh, it's called Librevit. Uh-huh. One of the things you do, and, and you were a columnist with Journal Metro, one of the things you do that I love is um, you take on really tough subjects, and uh, you use uh, sort of humor to diffuse mm-hmm. it. So is there a war on Christmas? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, uh Are, are people assimilating properly into Quebec? Is there is there something something as serious as rape culture? Mm-hmm. Uh, why is humor the best vehicle for? Or it seems like a good vehicle to address yes. difficult situations. I think it's a survival strategy because when we pitched the project to to the Quebec, uh, which hosts the the web series, uh, we told them it will be a feminist show, but don't worry. It will be funny, <laughs> and we'll be not angry yeah. all the time, yeah. and, uh, and it was a sort of a strategy to, to get get into the to get the gig, <laughs> and then to to keep with the the public uh, to keep up with the public who's like who wants to hear about those subjects, but in the meantime, it, these are very touchy subjects yeah. that creates a lot of anger and a lot of. Uh, Uh, guilt sometimes, and we don't want to guilt people. We don't want to say you're a bad person if you think like this or if you don't think yeah. like like us. But we want to make them laugh and make them realize that these are these are important subjects that we should talk about and yeah, have, I can be easy with it and have fun with it, even if it's like touching. Yeah, well, I, I I remember seeing your the report you guys did on rape culture. And it's there are two words that I think right away if you don't believe that that exists, mm-hmm. if if you think that maybe, you know, feminists or Nazis mm-hmm. or them, if you hear those words, you're going to shut down right away. Yeah. But you presented it in such a way that some of the examples you gave, you know, like they're um, so big like yeah. the, uh, the judge that asked 
ask the victim to close her yeah. legs or uh, if uh, if boys would touch a touch a a young girl at a like, on her breast yeah. after she was dancing in a suggestive, suggestive way, way. Yeah. Uh, yeah is that acceptable yes. and i think if you like if you sit down and and talk to someone they could have like politically just the most opposite view mm -hmm. but if you sit down and you engage with them and you just present that scenario to them uh, they're a lot less defensive and and uh, it's it's as you said it's it's a survival mechanism but it's also it's very it can be very disarming you know mm -hmm. and and I, I I must say I do appreciate that uh, <laughs> I do my best but also I think we should be angry sometimes yeah like some subjects deserve to be angry and we can be both at the yeah. same time we can be angry and laughing about stuff to make to make people realize that like it, it's ridiculed like you, you, it's it's absurd sometimes yeah. and yeah. when it, when they laugh like they are con confronted but in the funny way yeah well so la laughter is often easier. a nervous reaction yes. you know you you laugh in essence yeah because you're a little bit nervous uh -huh. because you're a little bit uncomfortable you laugh and it, and it betrays your own anxiety about about a very complicated issue or you laugh about yourself you're yeah. like oh that's so true i'm like this i'm yeah. this kind of yeah. white uh, warrior who thinks yeah that social justice she's warrior racist, but sometimes she is <laughs> it's good no I, i i i i i like it i think i think it's i'm just hogging the jenga game now <laughs> um the The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is how much my hands shake. Now, uh, yes, that's it. That's the thing. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's the beer. Uh, I was wondering. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about this. <laughs> Going to cut oh. this short. Um, I was wondering. There, there are everywhere. There are political commentators uh -huh. who say really offensive things, and I don't necessarily want to name any by by name. Fisher uh, Martino. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, and and it's like a Muslim person does something, and right away, well, that, that's evidence Muslim there must be are, yeah. Sharia law. Yeah. Uh, all Muslims are like that. Um, and it and it, whether it's to attract an audience, whether it's to play to a crowd, whether it's because he's a character, it's often a he. It's it's uh -huh. not as often a she. Well, it's a uh, it is, oh, yeah. yeah. We won't name names. No, we won't name names. These guys, no, uh, no, no, um, we won't go there. We won't go there. Uh, what, um, why, why, why can't we have a rational conversation? Because I think that you're on the internet, you know how intense it gets. Why can't mm -hmm. we just My, Well, talk? I guess these people don't think I'm rational as, as well. Yeah. I, they probably, uh, they you will are accuse irrational. me. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think we should always, like, uh, take facts into consideration when we have these conversations. It's very important, especially for t touchy subjects. Uh, but I think that, you know what? A lot of these people were actually really left-wing uh, commentators when they first began. Yeah. So I might become like Richard. Yeah. So no, yeah. <laughs> I, I never know. But, Damn uh, feminists. I, I think that it's easier to, to write about things that com comforts the majority. Yeah. Uh, so maybe those people were like, uh, had a lot of ideals when they were, were younger yeah. and they, they, they had facts to um, help me there. To, to back it up. To, to back it yeah. up, exactly. And at some point, uh, they received a lot of anger or they, they, they were backfired or whatever and they gave up to their ideals yeah. and probably it was just easier to to talk to the majority who thinks like them yeah who thinks that that mu muslims are a problem or that you yeah. know, whatever and and sometimes i i think about like especially feminist commentators um like i i will say her name because she was a really like she was really labeled as a powerful feminist in the in the 90s like uh, Denise Bombardier, yeah. and uh, she's not anymore, and I'm wondering if she, she, if she even holds a feminist discourse. Is that, yeah. is that how it's called? Uh, like, like, uh... Meninist? Me um, like a masculinist yeah, discourse? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think it's just easier, like, when you were labeled a 
raging feminist all your life, yeah. and it's really heavy to... to yeah, it's, you, you fight, there's, when you fight all the time, yes. it wears you down. Yeah, and you get tired, and I, I could, like, I could adhere to some, or I could write about things that I wouldn't agree no, I wouldn't do that. No, no, you have a soul. You still <laughs> yeah, have a soul. yeah, I wouldn't do that. I was well, like, eh, I, 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 that. I don't think I could do this. It's, it's maybe a part of it too is just we don't want to think of ourselves as, as, as being bad, as being part of a problem, as yes. being racist. And, and I don't, I don't know, I, I, I have many different views, but I, I, I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing to say, look, oh, maybe my views on this are problematic. Yes. And it doesn't mean I'm a bad guy. No. Like a lot, I don't think that a lot of these people wake up in the morning and think like, how can I make the world a worse place? Mm -hmm. No, nobody's a bad person. No. And I, I, there are I, bad people. No, no, bad. no, no, but yeah. I, no, I, I would say the majority of people don't, yeah, yeah. aren't actively trying to contribute to problems. Exactly. And they are not like, when we talk about rape culture, a lot of yeah. times people are saying, I'm, I'm not a rapist, I'm not encouraging yeah. rape, and that's not even, you're not even encouraging rape, you're just taking part, like I can do something, yeah. in a culture that can facilitate, facilitate that. you sort of create an yes, environment exactly, where, where if easier, you tell a young yeah. woman like, oh, well the guy grabbed your breast, what did you do, uh -huh. you know, you're, 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 from there, it's 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 in the same kind of ballpark uh -huh. as a woman was sexually assaulted. Yeah, but did she drink or what uh -huh. was she wearing? Exactly. Or, and we're very susceptible. And yeah. Because we are afraid to be the bad person. Like, yeah. Uh, being called a racist or being called a sexist is sometimes we feel like it's it's it hurts more than racism itself yeah. or sexism itself. Yeah. But it's not the case. I mean, our egos are hurt and it, it's uh, painful, but it's not as painful as the problem is. I, that's that a really that's that's a good up. way of putting it. Like it 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 sucks to be called a racist. It sucks to constantly be pulled over exactly. by a police officer because you're black. Or it yeah. sucks it sucks to be followed in the store because you're black. Or it sucks to get uh, different treatment at a hospital because you're indigenous. Exactly. It sucks to have someone call uh, youth protection on you because oh, I don't like the color of your skin and mm -hmm. uh, you know there must be a problem. Uh -huh. You know. So it it's 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 good. I don't know, like, I, I, I've learned that, you know, humor and, and engaging with people in, like, an empathetic way is a good way to move the conversation mm -hmm. forward. Uh, but I, I, I would imagine it gets exhausting. Is it ever, mm -hmm. in, in, your, in your situation, does it ever get to a point where you kind of just feel a little bit empty, like, trying to, to, to be the peacemaker? Tired. Yeah, exactly. And also, you know, uh, I've read a lot about... Um, or was it called uh, activism uh, burnout? Or uh, yeah, and I'm really like, uh, I don't. It's it's not easy for me to talk about this because, officially, I consider myself still as a journalist. Yeah, and people that would label me as an activist would do this. Uh, they they do they are doing this to diminish my work or yeah. diminish what I'm doing. You want to marginalize your opinion? Exactly. Well, she's just an activist. Exactly, and me, and and even like make it sound more extremist or less yeah. neutral, as if journalism was neutral. Yeah, no, like, we're super objective. I'm a robot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh. So, uh, but I think it, like you see, the world doesn't change the way you want. It doesn't go as fast yeah. as you want. There are lots of Trump is gets elected and or like, someone you really admired. Uh, it turns out to be a bit of a, a, yes, a exactly. fraud, or exactly, yeah. and uh, you are misunderstood. Yeah. People think you're an extremist when when you already tell them down what you think. Yeah, yeah, I... and so it gets exhausting. And at some point, I was tired to the point that I I quit uh, my column on Jean yeah. Metro for for lots of reasons, including trolls. Uh, do they call them? Yeah, it's, they, it's, they that's, that's, yeah. it's, it's probably a English world, word. I think so. They <laughs> so, live under bridges and on the internet. Exactly. Uh, so uh, there were lots of reasons uh, for me quitting the Journal Metro, but among them, uh, there was this exhaustion of like uh, always having to explain things again, yeah. and making sure people are not hurt in their feeling when you explain things like, systemic racism yeah and, and then but also on on that side but then also having to fight for exactly and having always people like 
uh, challenging your ideas. You're not going and, far and, enough, or yeah, yeah, exactly. There were there were yeah. also because criticism on the left can yeah, be ex- harder sometimes exactly. than criticism on the right. And sometimes you are doing things in, 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 thinking, okay, I will manage, I will manage the egos of the, the people who are more center right, right, and but. You are called out by social justice warriors that are more into yeah. social justice. You're being outflanked on the left, and you're exactly, being outflanked on the right. Exactly. And all you so want to do is. So you're super neutral, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, I guess perhaps uh, a, a parting thought, um, uh, because I think the next block is going to take this tumbling down. Are you? Uh, I remember once at a bar, I broke up a fight, and and a guy was trying to punch another guy, and he hit me in the face. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next day, I showed up to work uh, with Pat Hickey. And I had like a bit of a shiner. He said, what happened? I said, I broke up a fight and I got punched. And uh, because I consider you a bit of a peacemaker, Pat uh, decided to quote the Bible to me. He said, remember what Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall have the, kick, the shit kicked out of them. <laughs> the shit kicked out? The sh- ah, see, the joke fell flat. Because uh, he, he said, uh, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed, <laughs> blessed are the meek, oh. for they shall inherit the earth. It's, it's from the Sermon on the Mount. In any case... I, uh, man, I was ready Thank to finish this, the, but it's, but it's this, still uh, going. Faster, faster. Let's see if we can get this going. Now I'm obsessed with the Jenga game. Uh, Thank sorry. you for coming by and hey, sharing your views, man. Really, really appreciate it. You should check out Joseph Lucier's book. It's called Sacré des Panara. Translation it's, coming soon. I'm going to translate, yeah. Hitches. I'm going to translate it by hand. Just email me with a uh, check for 20 or 30 dollars i'll translate it send it to you in the mail it'll be great thank you so much for coming aboard Pleasure. i'm gonna go turn the show off thanks for tuning in uh, cheers